This is a short video on the basic operation of the CMM 2.0 Colonial Mutton Machine. We will demonstrate how to load a schedule and how filters can be used to sort the schedules. We will also see how to manually enter production units through MDI, manual data input, and how to make custom grid patterns. The application software automatically launches when the machine is booted up, but if it is exited, then restart it from the desktop by double tapping the icon. The recommended maintenance schedule will automatically open when the software is launched. Complete the items that are required, those in red text, and check the box to indicate that the task has been completed. If necessary, the recommended maintenance schedule can be opened from the maintenance menu. Press Schedule Select to choose the schedule or schedules to be run. While it's not necessary here, as there is only one schedule, filtering options can be used to minimize what schedules are shown. Select the schedule. Its content is shown, and there is the ability to choose the starting and ending units. Press Start to load the schedule. Here we chose to start with unit number 2 and end on unit number 4, but let's reload the schedule to start on unit number 1. Notice, the machine is in an e-stop condition. Twist and pull the e-stop out to reset. The schedule has been reloaded to start with grid number 1. Follow the instructions on the screen. Load two bars and press the saw foot switch to cut them. Load a bar on the notcher and slide it to the end stop on the left. Press the foot switch to clamp and the notchers will activate when the light curtain is clear, provided that the machine is in the PSDI or Present Sensing Device Initiation Mode. Note, if the PSDI mode is disabled, the foot pedal would have to be pressed twice, once to clamp the bars, and then once to notch them. Press Step Advance and load two more bars to cut, as instructed on the screen. Press the soft foot switch to cut them, then put them in the notchers to get punched. Insert the cross clips and carefully hook it with a crossbar. Lift slightly and roll it over to hook the other side of the clip. Use caution not to scratch the grid bars. Assemble the rest of the grid in the same manner. Here we have a typical grid pattern with two vertical and two horizontal components. Press the manual data input button to enter the grid information manually. Enter the unit width and height, the grid type, mutton configuration, the calculation type, and the number of vertical and horizontal bars. Check Create Custom and then press View to see a representation of the grid configuration. Here you can edit all the grid information, like the number of vertical and horizontal components as well as their position in the unit. Press the Draw Grid button to update the image on the screen. Press OK when finished and Step Advance. Before continuing, let's review some of the information on this screen. The IG unit setup shows the unit width and height, which is the glass size of the actual IG unit. The width and height adjust are only used when there's a difference in the IG unit width or height. 
such as in a single hung window where the vent unit is smaller width-wise than the fixed unit. The mutton information area allows for different types of grids, colonial or contour options. The mutton configuration provides the option to define the grid pattern as bars or components versus panes. The calculation type has an option for on center line or equal light computation, which is further explained in the instruction manual, along with all the other options here under the manual data input section. The number of verticals and horizontals are entered based upon the mutton configuration as components or panes. Create Customs just demonstrated how grid patterns can be modified from their default spacing calculations. And the parameters to the right show values that are used to calculate the component length and notch locations. These values may need change based upon the punch tooling that is installed. The Operation Sequence section in the middle of the screen shows the number of steps needed to complete the grid, the number of verticals and horizontal notches for each component, in this example, there are two notches on the vertical component and one notch on the horizontal component. And numbers 1 through 5 show the actual punch positions relative to the punch home position. The adjust value is a calculated offset from the edge of the glass. Follow the steps on the screen. Cut the one vertical bar for this unit and notch it. Note, since this is a custom grid, the notches will be punched separately. Cut and notch the horizontal bars and assemble. This is an example of a half prairie or perimeter grid. Next we'll enter a 30 inch by 30 inch unit with a 2 by 2 grid pattern. Press Draw Grid and custom enter the grid locations for a prairie or perimeter grid. Press OK and Step Advance. Punch the first punch on the first two bars, step advance, and then punch the second notch on the first two bars. Repeat this for the other two bars. Again, these are punched separately because they're a custom grid. Here we have a 30 inch by 30 inch unit with a 4 inch perimeter or prairie grid pattern. Next we'll do a 96 inch by 30 inch with 6 vertical and 2 horizontal bars. Cut and notch the first two bars, then press Step Advance. Cut and notch the second two bars. These require six notches. But because there's only five punches, it'll position and punch the first five notches on both bars, and then punch the sixth notch on each bar after pressing Step Advance. Now 
Additional notches can be done as long as the fifth notcher does not try to exceed the end of the ball screw. As a safety feature, the saw cover cannot be opened unless the machine is e-stopped. That's because there's a safety interlock to prevent it from being opened when there's power to the motor. Here's the clamping assembly and a carbide tip saw blade. Also, custom fixtures can be made to hold parts. If the light curtain is breached while the machine is moving or operating, an emergency stop is induced. To recover, release the e-stop and press Step Advance. 